everyone. Today's video is going to be relatively short and get into how to calculate a percent change. With the, the data set you can see in front of you is, should be familiar at this point. It's Little Rock. All I did was download this from their data portal online. And I want to look from 2017 through 2021. There are some 2022 crimes in here given when I downloaded it, but we'll go through it. To do that, the first step I always recommend, and the pivot table option would already pick this up, but it's another way just to make your life easier. So I'm going to insert a column and I'm just going to make a year one itself. Always double check when you insert a column. Even if you have it highlighted, it says it's general, but if you click on individual cells, here it's custom and it's picking up that date and timestamp. So again, make sure it's all set to general. This just saves some headaches down the lines. I'm going to name this variable or column year. We're truly going to use the year function, type in year, open paren, and it's going to call that or extract that out for us, and we know it's 2021. Quick way to auto fill or flash fill, double click that downwards, and we're good to go. At this point, you just need to highlight your data set and go up to insert pivot table. So all I did there to highlight my data set was hold down control and shift, hit the down arrow, then right arrow. Insert pivot table since I have this highlighted. It recognizes it as the table of the range I want to use. I want it in a new worksheet. Click OK. I'm just going to move this on the other side here at the bottom and relabel this as pivot. As my columns, since I just created that year field, I want to move that to my columns itself. So we see 2017 through 2022. I want to look at it based on offense description. So we see here all the crime types. In our data set, every row is a specific incident. So with that, each one has an incident number. Because of that, we just want a count of these. So I put in count, it comes in here, we can see our values here. Pretty straightforward. I could use this table to do the calculation, calculations I want to for percent change. I'm just gonna highlight this to 2021, copy, go into a new sheet, and I'm going to paste it as values itself. So it takes it out of the pivot table format. And we're good to go. I'm going to auto fit it. So here we have crime type. And at the bottom, I'm going to relabel this as percent change. And just some cosmetic things to make it look easier. Bolding of the rows and columns. But from here, I want to compare 2020 to the prior years and then 2021 to 2020 in the prior years as well. To do that, oftentimes when we have data, especially crime data, we want to take an average of three to five years to see even if there was a huge spike or a decrease, what's the norm of here, Little Rock itself. So to do that, we're gonna add up three prior years, 17, 18, and 19, take the average of those, then compare it to 2020, and then 2021. So to do that, I'm just gonna hop over one cell, average 2017 through 2019. Again, to do that using the average formula, you can do it a couple of different ways. If you're forgetting how to just run the average itself, you can honestly just highlight and add those together. And then again, since we have three, we end up dividing by three to get our average at the end. If you have too many decimal places or you don't want decimal places, don't forget at the top up here, you can minimize those as needed. Again, since we put in a formula up here, we can just move that downwards and flash fill. For whatever reason, it didn't work when I clicked it. But if I carry it down, it worked for us. So now I have an average from the prior three years of 17, 18, and 19 for ag assault down to theft of motor vehicle parts. You might wonder what that has to do. If you've seen it in the news, there's also been a talk about catalytic converters based on the minerals, metals in it. But mostly my interest is in violence, especially after 2020 when we saw nationwide there's a 5% increase in violence. I wanted to look at Little Rock specifically and then see what 2021 looked like. So here I'm going to do percent change for 2020. And to do that, we're going to take our new value, which would be our 2020. So equal sign, going to open a paren, subtract our old value, which would be our older average. And then we divide by our old average. With that, oftentimes if you look this up, you might see some people include this whole formula here in parentheses and then times it by 100 to get the actual percentage. We're in Excel, so Excel has a couple different ways we can do this. I'll show this on another one, but for now, if I hit enter, it shows 0.27. So if I come up here and then change this to the percent, it'll change that for us. So we know in 2020, there's a 28% increase in ag assaults for the city of Little Rock. 
and as we go onwards, we can see how that looks across all different crime types. Murder went up 5%, but you can see in other ones, some of our property crimes went down. So this is kind of the larger discussion that we saw at the national level. Keep in mind when we look at rape, those vary from year to year, especially in reporting and in a COVID year when more people are at home. The reporting could change heavily and it's oftentimes underreported as is. So take that one with a grain of salt, but you do see across property crimes, we do see a decrease generally. With that, I'm gonna bold that again. Now let's see a percent change from, let's do 2020 here to 2021. We'll do the longer formula to show you what that looks like. So again, it would just be two open parentheses. We would take our new value of 2021 minus our old value of 2020, divide by our old value of 2020, close that off. So that's encompassing all of that. And then we would just do times 100 to get our percent at this point. Again, if you double click and fill downwards, I'm going to create fewer decimal places there, but you can see where there are increases and decreases again, based on crime type. Overall, you can see some of the decreases that we're seeing in 2020 for property crime pick back up in 2021. If you think about lockdown measures and everything else, there was a change in that. So almost if you think about the opportunity structure of crime again, it's shifting based on lockdowns, COVID pandemic, people are more so living and dealing with it in normal life and routine. And not as many things are shut down, locked down, your routines aren't as uh, restricted in the sense of that. So it changes the crime structure of it. Now you might wonder, well, what's 2021 look like compared to the pre-pandemic years? We have the data, so we can do that again as well. So we can do percent change 2021. Similar, I'm gonna do like this first formula because I like the percentage, percentage signs popping up without having to do much effort. So we take our new value of 2021 minus our old value, which is that average, divide by our old value itself. And I'm going to flash fill that down. And again, come up here and change that to a percent. And you can see if we're looking at most current year, calendar year, ag assault compared to the pre-pandemic years went up 43%, larceny up 14%. We still see some of our property crimes decreasing as a whole, and that's probably more reflective as the nation as well. If you see the murder and manslaughter, we do see the uptick in that 2021 had a count of 63. The highest count for Little Rock was 68 back in the 90s. So even with population change and everything with this, 2021 was a very violent year if you look at murder and ag assault for the city of Little Rock. Across the property crimes, though, we do see that shift downwards, but we still even see rape compar comparatively to 2021, to pre-pandemic years, is back on the increase for that. So if you can see kind of that upward momentum here with the three years, 2020 again had that drop. That's our pandemic year. So it's interesting to see that much of an uptick in 2021. But this is an easy way to see some of those quick changes. For those of you who want it to be a bit more visually appealing, you can always do some conditional formatting here. So if we look at percent change from 2020, we come up to conditional formatting. They have color scales, you can even highlight. But if you wanted to do it to where, in our mind, green would be a decline, so you see a reduction in crime counts. Red would be bad, it's increasing too much. So we use the red to green color. We can see how that highlights for us. And we can do that across each one. Again, I'm only highlighting specific columns because this makes it specific to these values itself. If I did all of it, it would take all of them together, similar to a temporal heat map that I've done before. So you can see across these percent change calculations where the big outliers are, be it color-wise, both positive and negative when you think about it. Theft from coin-operated machines obviously is not a huge incident count as a whole, so take those with a bit of uh, hesitation when we're looking at the count itself similar to purse snatching pickpocketing itself but these are in here to look at so if you want to look at some of the main crime types of ag assault larceny burglary motor vehicle theft even murder down to rape robbery shoplifting in little rock i've looked at for quite a while so it's interesting to see even in 2021 how much of a decline there was 
So with that, some quick ways to look at percent change based on a yearly basis. If you have any questions, reach out, let me know. If not, take care.